Machines were fucking awesome, and if you were a young boy in the 80s or 90s, you had to agree. Several video games were created based on the franchise, and given the time period, naturally the NES was the first one. It's a top down racing game, and there are various tracks using various vehicles, many of which have different handling and physics. Because it's based on miniature toy vehicles, the tracks are appropriately themed. For example, you could race jeeps on a kitchen table, sports cars on a desk, and Formula One cars on a billiard table. There are usually obstacles and hazards on and off the track that'll slow you down, like spilled orange juice, oil, glue, and whirlpools, as well as falling off the track entirely. You're also allowed to veer off track a bit, but if you take too hard a shortcut, you'll be sent back to where you started. There are 11 characters in the game, each with strengths and weaknesses for different vehicles, but some are stronger than others overall. The character you choose won't have any effect on how well you perform, but it does affect the computer-controlled players, so if you want more of a challenge, pick one of the weaker characters like Walter, so you can battle all the tougher opponents. Or you can pick a stronger character like Spider to keep things easier, although getting through all 24 tracks is anything but easy, no matter who you pick. In order to qualify for the next track, you need to finish in first or second place out of the four competitors. If you fail, you lose a life and have to try the track again. You start out with three lives, and when you lose them all, it's game over with no continues. You can earn bonus lives in a special track where you race alone against the clock. If you finish in time, you'll get one extra life. The computer players get eliminated every third race, and what's dumb is that they're eliminated in order of appearance, so they really have no chance to survive. It's just a rotation. Oh well. Because of this, you're really better off picking the tougher opponents early and getting them out of the way during the easy races, but things start getting tough as shit as the game progresses either way. You probably won't even notice. Despite the challenge, which can get frustrating, it's still a fun and intense game. The tracks are distinct, both in theme and structure, and the controls are tight. One thing that does bug me slightly is that some blockades will stop you cold like you're in tar, rather than bounce you off, because now instead of simply shifting your direction to get back on track, you have to throw yourself in reverse first, which slows you down more than it already does by stopping you dead in your tracks. There's also a two-player mode, which is one-on-one, -on -one, either a single race or best-of-seven series. Micro Machines was ported two years later to the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo. Both versions were almost identical to the NES version, aside of course from visual upgrades and slight tweaks here and there. But the NES version still has aged very well, and really you can't go wrong with any of these versions. And if it doesn't say Micro Machines, it's not the real thing. And that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.